Attention in the Brain by Pretty Fly for a Cogsai. So, what is attention? In short, attention is a cognitive process of focusing on a particular aspect of one's surroundings. Perception, memory, consciousness, and even the way we process information are all affected by attention to a significant degree. Even as you sit through this presentation, you are visually attending to the screen while focusing on our voices. It allows our brain to filter out unnecessary information, enables discrete responses to visual, auditory, or tactile stimuli, maintain a consistent behavioral response during an activity, and, in special cases such as playing an instrument, allows us to perform multiple tasks simultaneously. How does attention relate to cognitive science? In class, we discuss representations such as frames, images, logic, and a few others. Representations are nearly impossible without the use of attention. As discussed, mental representations are a way we connect the represented world to the world we're representing. So where does attention come into play? Consider how we form logical statements. We begin with an antecedent. Then, to form a consequent, we use our selective attention, usually for memory, as an explanation. Analogies and concepts are even more dependent on attention. In Concepts We Live By, Lakoff introduced the conduit metaphor of languages, which involved inserting thoughts into containers and using attention to filter out and extract the contents. Without attention, the extractions become difficult and confusing to process. Likewise, in analogies, we focus on projecting source to target with an attending goal. Attention is an essential process in forming representations, and thus necessary in the world of cognitive science. Top-down processing occurs when knowledge controls what attention is focused on. It allows people to distinguish an object from a background. It can also bias people to look in places where something may appear. For example, if you were looking for a tennis ball, you would focus on color and look for yellow. Computational models of attention that rely on top-down processing allow a feature like color or shape to take priority over other features. Bottom-up processing relates to how people notice salient signals. It would explain why a person would look at a bright neon sign before a gray one, and why people quickly turn towards a loud sudden noise. Computational models of attention that rely on bottom-up processing depend on saliency maps, which provide the saliency of everything in sight. Attention can be related to the firing of neurons. When a group of neurons fire together, the brain focuses on the objects associated with those neurons. When a group of firing neurons suppresses the firing of another group of neurons, a shift of attention occurs. One computational model of attention, called the feature gate model, uses neural networks to combine top-down processing and bottom-up processing. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders today, affecting 4-6% to of the U.S. population. Some symptoms of inattention include often having trouble holding attention on tasks or play activities, doesn't seem to listen when spoken to directly, and often forgetful in daily activities. Though not a single cause has been found, there are many hypotheses. Some of these include genetics, brain complications, and environmental exposures. It is well known that ADHD is related to the brain. This positron emission tomography, or PET scan, shows that patients with ADHD had lower levels of dopamine transporters than in control subjects. This is one popular theory amongst studies. One theory is that there is something in the brain that interferes with the neuron synchrony. It is well known that the neurons that fire together wire together, but neurons of patients with ADHD have trouble wiring together. No matter the theory, all scientists believe that there is a combination of neurotransmitters that affect the brain. A study in 2008 used bottom-up saliency maps to detect ADHD. In this study, the experiment was 100% accurate with children and adults in the detection of ADHD. The scientists created a saliency map for two to four second clips of music videos and documented where each subject's eyes focused on for each clip. There are various kinds of treatment for people with attention deficit disorders. The most common are behavioral treatments, medication, and a combination of the two. Behavioral treatments target the psychological aspect of the attention deficit, while medication addresses the biological and neurological aspects, which affect cognition. A study tested which treatment was the most effective. The behavioral treatment involved individual therapy and a summer treatment program, while the medication management involved strict monitoring of medication. The study also tested a combination of both treatments. The conclusion was that medication management is significantly more effective than behavioral treatment, but the medication has to be continued or else the benefits would diminish. 
What makes medication so effective? Medication has shown positive results because different medications involving stimulants adjust the neurophysiological deficit that people with attention deficit disorders have. When patients are administered stimulants, the levels of the neurotransmitter associated with pleasure, movement, and attention, called dopamine, increase. As the dopamine levels increase, attention increases, which affects the cognitive brain functions by improving the processing of cortical information.